Today, I'm off to visit Ted Trainer's place, a beautiful bush block near Sydney. The only thing is, to get there, I've got to go back a new. Development of the area has caused Ted to lose proper access to his property. I'm less than 10 minutes walk away from Ted's place, and on this side, a growing line of McMansions. On this side, the bush regen area. Ted's property is full of examples of how we could live in suburbs that are more fun and more sustainable. He calls it the simpler way. This is a forge blacksmithing setup. Well, this is a little sawmill. This is a bicycle powered pottery wheel. This is a centrifuge for getting the honey out of the frames. That's as good as a bought one. Actually better. Ted, you just told me to take some of this home, but what is it? It's New Zealand spinach. It's um, a plant that just grows wild, stacks of it around here, and it's the best spinach you'll ever eat. It's better than the bought stuff. But the point is we should be filling our neighbourhoods with lots of weeds and bush tucker that'll just grow naturally and provide a considerable amount of our food automatically so that we don't have to even plant it and uh, look after it, let alone go to supermarkets to buy it in tin. So Ted, this is a very cute little structure over here. Did you build it? Oh yeah, everything around here is homemade, but this is one example of how you build with earth mm. in many, many ways, and it's by far the best building material. It doesn't burn, it's nice and warm, cheap, and this is a rammed earth brick. You just make your bricks in a press and use them like ordinary bricks. We're trying to see Ted's chooks, but they don't really want to come out, and why would they? They live in a mansion made out of wattle and daub. So how do you like living here? <laughs> yeah, basically you heard it there. How do you wash your clothes around here? We use this fella. Oh yeah. This is um, a fan motor out of a car. It cost me about five dollars. The wheels gear it down. But this is an engine that does a number of jobs for us. It pulls on a pump further up, and I'll soon have it sawing firewood too. Is how our neighbourhoods could be made more interesting and enriched by gadgets that are not only useful but are interesting and odd, unusual. Oh, nice! I'm gonna wash my shirt, Ted. Ted's got heaps of examples of how we can generate power in our community. Check out this water wheel. We've got several pumps on this property that have cost hundreds of dollars, but none of them are as efficient as this one. It's a scruffy old bit of hose coiled up, but when the open end of the coil dips in the water, it collects up an amount of water, and they add up in the coils, and it functions as a pump. Now that's a very crude example, but they do make pumps on that principle that will lift water a long way. We're not far from the city, but we're an absolute paradise. Ted, what's your motivation for making this property what it is? Basically, it's saving the planet, trying to make the point, trying to show that alternative ways are possible. We've got the Global Eco Village movement, we've got the Transition Towns movement, and there are actually thousands of people around the world now in those movements trying to get people to realise that the sort of things we're doing here are not just ways to defuse global problems, but good fun, nice way to live. Ted, thank you so much for showing us around today. Can I come use your washing machine tomorrow? Anytime. Oh, Anytime. Awesome. My water bill is massive.